Welcome to the slightly gloomy background of Hexen 2. I'm going to run through this entire game as a series. I know this came out of nowhere, but I remembered about this recently and I realised I really wanted to show it off to people. I used to play this with all my siblings and everything and it took us absolutely ages. We spent months just uh, playing this game together. Not because it was particularly engrossing, as I've later come to realise, but because it just isn't all that good compared to what we thought of it at the time. It's on Steam now, it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews because it's nostalgic for a lot of people, but I'm just going to start off and complain about it from there and you can draw your own conclusions. Uh, so what we'll be playing here is a uh, first-person shooter, it's based on the Quake engine, but it's got a lot of RPG adventure attempted to be mixed in with it as well. And the first part of that is that we can choose our character class. We've got a few choices here, and they... that... oh, that's wrong. Oh, that's an unusual choice, isn't it? The pressing left or right on that menu opens the game console and crashes it, so, uh, yeah. Unusual approach there. Um, yeah, I think I was always the necromancer of the assassin, so I'm going to do something a bit different, go for the crusader this time. They've all got different weapons, and uh, different different uh, difficulty level descriptions as well, not that it really matters. I'm going to go for Holy Avenger, which is, it's easy, but not really wimpy. We'll see how it works. Alright, so we start off confidently in a graveyard, uh, which is very inviting. Uh, we've got some sort of castle up to our right there, we've got an archway, and we have... Yeah, there's a note on the wall that clearly says Adventurers, uh, and has about four lines of text, but uh, there's an entire novel on it. I am leaving messages in case I fail to destroy Eidolon. Uh, I'll explain that later. I begin in Castle Blackmarsh, where Famine waits. I have heard strange rumours of an invisible crystal golem that protects the entrance to Famine's lair. Perhaps the King's Mages know of a way to grant me the power to destroy it. I believe that the Brotherhood of Hunger may hold some clues, and knowing that, I must acquire the Amulet of Hunger for the Castle Treasury. Okay. So the game does have an introduction, but it isn't in the Steam version for whatever reason. Uh, to vaguely explain why we're doing all this, and it's that uh, Eidolon, who was mentioned in that letter there, uh, is a serpent rider big demon thing who has uh, invaded the lands of Therion, I think they're called, with his four horsemen of the apocalypse. And it's up to us to stop him with our trusty gardening implements. So let's make a start here, we're just climbing the ramp up to this uh, castle here. And immediately we're set upon with some of the most scary enemies you will find, uh, double-decker spiders. You can, you can just smash them to atoms, thankfully, and they won't bother you for too long. Quartz flasks, uh, you've got an inventory, you can carry things around, quartz flasks are, are, are portable medikits. So, let's go to this castle, we pick up a torch, there's an altar here. Doesn't seem to do anything here, no buttons or switches. There are some tapestries around, nothing really special. I suppose we'll go over here. I'll give you a clue, we're going to come back to that place later. So through the archway, we pass down a fairly wide corridor and we have a wooden door at the end, which doesn't react to hammer blows, but we give our first combat in here that isn't with arachnids. There's an archer over there who will be firing magical bolts at us uh, until we decide to stop him. So combat is a bit awkward at first because you only have this hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat weapon at first. All the four classes have uh, their uh, first weapon is hand-to-hand. -hand. Some of their second weapons are as well, actually. And you, you, ju you just have to keep side sliding around until eventually you get you get a blow in on them. Uh, but there's a Triforce over here, so let's press that, see what that does. It releases some rats which uh, have the same sound effect, or a similar sound effect, to the spiders. So, uh, which is always disconcerting, because spiders are difficult to see, they're fast, and they're annoying. So let's press that, and that leads us to the other door. So, yeah, one of my chief complaints about this game <laughs> Uh, which we'll see recur- oh, my goodness, is that spiders are hiding in barrels. Is that, uh, yeah, buttons and switches are unnecessarily hidden. Uh, there is no way to normally pass through this village uh, without an average citizen having to duck under tables and press buttons and pull switches just to get to the butcher shop. Uh, so, 
that is really the main source of difficulty. Uh, that and the completely inadequate lighting. I did turn the brightness up, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see something in the video. Okay, we're back in another open area now. Quartz flask, here's another archer. And the ice staff, which is our second weapon already. Uh, oh, please, please freeze. Yes, they do freeze in place and then you can belt them with a mallet. This is going to be a lot of fun. So you can see actually, uh, while I'm walking over here, that the uh, mana, which I'm picking up just now, uh, is on the bottom of the status bar on the right there. It's fairly microscopic because this game was designed for a 320 by 200 resolution and you can whack it all the way up to 1600 by 900 in the OpenGL release, but uh, yeah, mana is not, is not all that easy to come by. It's kind of frustrating that you really need to watch your ammunition. At least for the first sections of the game. Let's go to the mill. Oh, and immediately we're set upon by, I think, two archers in the distance there. I should mention, by the way, that it's, I had to spend ages setting this game up to use Mouse Luke rather than the uh, tank controls that we were also used to then. Uh, the Steam release kind of provides some niceties like uh, setting up the controls for mouse loop but doesn't actually turn it on and you also have to use command line switches create your own shortcut to uh, get the re resolution to where you want so uh, I'm putting in some effort for you let's put it that way oh this this door isn't automatic like all the others okay looks like we're gonna find the other way around there's an archer You've got no obligation to uh, just hit them with a mallet, so you can you can shatter the uh, statues anyway, but I kind of enjoy it. Okay, looks like there's nothing for it. Let's dive! Oh, under two inches of water! That's going to hurt my ankles. Getting out of the water, belting some plants with a hammer. Well, that's surprisingly sturdy. Oh, more spiders on us. We make our way up the hill. We want to stay as far away from those as possible. As you would. Alright, here's a bit of jumping. And we have... what is that actually? That's a chaos device. Oh, I think that... I think that teleports you to a random place on the map. Which doesn't sound all that useful. It's for use if you're in a really dire situation and that anywhere is better than the place you currently are. I don't know if I can teleport you to a place where you haven't been yet. Let's see, let's see what happens when I use it. Oh, maybe it teleports you to the entrance. Oh well, I suppose I better walk back there now. Okay, we're back at the outcrop and into the caves of lots and lots of darkness. Hope there are no spiders in here. We have made it through the darkness without injury. And our reward is more spiders! So having dealt with those, we have a choice of two teleporters, this one or that one, and I honestly can't remember where either of them lead. Let's check. Okay, here is the titular mill. More spiders, more etcetras. You can see uh, down there, instead of health and armor, this game opts to call them uh, HP and AC, and you don't get much more RPG than that. Oh, of course it's locked. Of course. Uh, up on the top of this uh, oddly perfectly cubical courtyard where the windmill can't possibly catch enough wind, uh, there's a mystic urn. And that's that's just an extra life. So let's try the top teleporter. We are in the ruins of a church. I should not have this hammer out. Okay, so now that we've got time to explore a little more calmly... Uh, I really can't tell you anything of worth whatsoever. Oh, look! Big lever! Ah, uh, I didn't... <laughs> I don't see a bell! Uh, I heard something big moving and breaking. Oh! Oh, this'll be it! <laughs> ah, a book! A book... Uh, it says nothing. Great. Whoa, okay. That door opened a little faster than I was comfortable with. And... Just spiders everywhere! If you hadn't seen... If you didn't know the introduction, you'd think this was a medieval pest exterminator simulator. Okay, where am I now? Oh no, this is back at the start again. Well, that's good to know. I did nothing. 
Oh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I suppose my sum total of achievements in this environment was to realize I needed the mill key. So let's go and get it. Enemies don't regenerate or anything. Which, uh, on one hand, is nice, but on the other, it produces some awfully empty environments if you have to backtrack a lot. Nevertheless, on the path that we haven't yet explored, we have a bridge into another little castle. One of the arches again. Okay, and we are now... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! We are now faced with an enemy we haven't seen yet. I can't remember what they're called. Maybe Sorcerer or something like that. They're dangerous, whatever they are. Yeah. <laughs> Ran out of ammunition at exactly the right time. But uh, just like in Legend of Zelda, uh, violently destroying pottery uh, can pay off to get you some more mana and health. So taking stock of our surroundings just now, we have this pool of highly dangerous looking liquid, and we have a book which says, uh, you need the bone dust of Lorik to complete the spell and create the potion of mithril transmutation. And does that mean anything at this stage? We've got... we don't know who Lorik is, we don't know what a potion of mithril transmutation is or why we would need it. Uh, we're just uh, getting a random quest from a book we've read. Although now that I come to think of it, you are a crusader. So let's go into this next uh, environment, which is Barbican. Barbican, I think, has... it's a big castle. Uh, and a catapult, uh, with a sheep. Oh! Sorry, Mr. Sheep! Oh well, it's going to be mutton for dinner tonight. Uh, so this door is emphatically barred, so it looks like our only option is to take the same way the sheep went, and... Uh, just, I think you just have to hammer this catapult. Whoa! Yes, I nearly squished a spider on the way. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, the sheep seems to have disintegrated on impact, uh, but don't worry about it. It's the first in a long line of casualties. The Crater of Might. What's the Crater of Might? I can't even remember what it does. I think it might refill your uh, ammunition. It does! Okay, I'll have that. Okay, one short tunnel, and about six million spiders later, here we are at the side of a hill. Which, a couple of quartz flasks, and I don't think anything else of use, so let's go to the door and uh, continue our way into the castle. Oh, clearly they don't want us in the castle! Uh, whoa! Okay, so, uh... uh <laughs> I suppose now's an ideal time to show you the water features of the game. Um, they they have a nice wibbly effect to them. Uh, let me let me compare above ground and below ground. They have this wibbly effect when you're underwater, but they seem to do it not by distorting the graphics, but by distorting the actual walls. So if we yeah, you can see that the ball separates from its wall, and I am drowning. I, I sorry, I I was. I was so engrossed in showing you the water effect that I forgot I wasn't amphibious. Um, <laughs> squid can't have helped either. Um, okay, so I, I iced him and he will be delicious with some of his seafood breath. And, um, yeah, okay, so drawbridge has gone up. Uh, looks like the moat is our only option. Let's try not to drown. Uh, <laughs> blank wall, no explanation. I think we'll be coming back there. Uh, okay, let's take note of that. But there's another corridor here, with another squid! Okay, so uh, now level 2, I've gained a level, another uh, RPG touch. That allows me to uh, have more health at maximum, and I honestly don't know what else. Uh, some of the characters actually have special powers. Uh, the Assassin, for example, if you hide in shadows for long enough, uh, she can turn invisible and uh, probably not have much an effect on enemies, to be honest, but uh, I don't know. Uh, the Necromancer can probably suck the life force out of enemies somehow. There's a chance of gaining health when you destroy an enemy, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the Crusader's special power is. Maybe I'll find out. Okay, didn't have much luck there. Let's go back to that grate that I noticed. Uh, by the way, I'm only noticing these things so quickly because uh, I vaguely remember them from before. Uh, it might have taken me a week or more to uh, get that far, the original run through. Run, run, get up, get up, get up! Okay, we're not getting up here. We're not getting... oh. Yeah, th this is a bad place to try and walk up. Okay, we've surfaced somewhere else now. Let's belt this wall down with a hammer. 
Whoa, okay. Uh, just millions of spiders. You think there'd be enough by now? I know that I said that. Uh, I know I said at the start that it didn't have much of an emphasis on placing a lot of enemies in the level, but uh, it seems I might have misremembered that. Most items in this game are destructible, by the way. Uh, the, I remember that being a huge point of the game at first, uh, the first time I played through it, but maybe it was because I was so useless at finding the way to go that my only source of amusement was uh, causing to d destruction to inanimate objects. Whoa, 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 okay. Kind of running low on health now, so I'm hoping there's going to be- Oh no, I don't- I don't need to! I don't- I've got quartz flasks! It's useful, uh, medieval medication. Okay, making our way through the castle now, th uh, there's that, uh, what's it called, Privia that I saw earlier. And there's the most rock-solid curtain ever, half protecting a bedroom. I th I think I remember a secret here. If you use your hammer destructive properties to build on this wall with a carefully disguised symbol behind a heap of jars. Oh, this isn't a secret! You were meant to do this to progress in the game. Okay. So this will show you uh, something that is a running theme in this game, that because the Quake engine doesn't really lend itself to complicated puzzles, a lot of the progress in this game is... Uh, it relies on finding things in corners or hidden things or just building on random walls and finding uh, the way forward from there. A complaint that I also leveled at Super Metroid during my uh, Super playthrough of that, but uh, I now regret that because Hexen 2 is far worse for it. Anyway, uh, we stand next to this, we're in control of the ballista, we use it to blow up the entire tower for some reason. <laughs> That was far less spectacular than you'd expect, but uh, now there's a teleporter through there we can get to. Uh, I can just jump off, but I want to find out the way to get onto that ledge first. I think it should be just about behind this room somewhere, and often you can walk through flags or stained glass windows. Uh, but today is not that day. Oh. So, uh, back in the main courtyard now, where... Whoa, okay, I was... <laughs> uh, that ballista uh, is on automatic. I think I need to destroy it? But it's uh, honestly a bit difficult to tell. Hang on. Does that do it? Nope, it's still, it's still looking at me. Whoa! Yeah, it's, it's, it's destructible. You can tell because otherwise the hammer goes clonk on it, but... It's taking a lot of ammunition to do it. Fortunately, the arrows of fires are really slow. Oh, oh, last, okay. Where's that archer? Alright. I'll use the ice staff again. Uh, you can go down the fountain, but I think that's just another way into the waterway that I came up. Uh, yeah, in that room. So, the main entrance should be around here somewhere, I think. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you're supposed to stand on that side of the little uh, archer slot, Archer. Goodbye. So what is this stall, anyway? We've got meat, uh, <laughs> which is made out of Lego, and wine that's actually a disc of repulsion, which I think I had before, yeah. So discs of repulsion, I think, just uh, repulsificate enemies. When you use them, they, they uh, bounce away a bit. I don't think they're very useful. Okay, main, main entrance to the castle, <laughs> which I need a key for. Uh, check under the doormat, no such luck. Uh, I do remember though that there is, there's definitely a secret here. Yes! Okay. I have got the bracers, which gives me an armor class of 12. Is that good? I don't know. Now this wall's obviously misaligned or something, but uh, nothing seems to knock it out of the way. There's no use button, by the way. Everything is either triggered by walking into it or smashing it with a hammer. So let's take a look at this uh, teleport that we unveiled here. If I can just climb this hill again. Uh, and yeah, there's an explosive barrel there, by the way. A little subtle symbol on the side. Not so subtle effect. 
And here we go. What possible... Why did I destroy an entire tower which doesn't have any doors anyway uh, to get to a teleport? I got a Tome of Power and the Mill Key, which is extremely well defended, isn't it? That was, I feel, an unnecessarily well defended Mill Key uh, to be thrown up here in a room with no entrances or exits, but uh, we now have a lead, so uh, tally ho! So, one hike back through most of the game later, uh, here's the curiously walled off windmill again, and uh, we have just solved our first puzzle by uh, standing next to a door with the key. And we can see here that this windmill is built on a lake of fairly hot lava, but we need the bones of Lorik to actually do anything with it. And uh, we don't, I still don't know why we need the bones of Lorik or who Lorik was, but uh, in the absence of better things to do, I suppose we'd better start looking for them. But where? Uh, while on my leisurely walk back to the palace, by the way, I should say that uh, Therion... Uh, the, ga the whole game isn't like this. Well, the whole game is like this, but the visuals of the game aren't all like this, because Therion is apparently somewhat based on the Crystal Maze, with very clearly delineated and separate environments. We're here in the medieval zone just now, or Black Marsh as the game calls it, but we'll be visiting very different places a bit later on. Okay, here we are. Here's the bridge uh, that we ignored earlier on, because it's a bridge. But is it just a bridge? There's something useful in the water here, but if you look around enough of these pillars, um, somewhere, give me a minute, <laughs> there it is, okay. There's another Triforce on the wall. Oh wow, <laughs> the wibble is getting strong in this dimension, Captain, the whole wall's coming out of the wall. Uh, let's hit that. What does that do? Okay, that opens a snake head teleport. Ah, to somewhere nowhere good! Hang on a minute while I deal with these. The enemy programming is actually pretty competent. Uh, I know that uh, later in the game there are enemies that try to actively sidestep and avoid your shots. These archers duck occasionally. But it's not enough to actually defeat a human being. Give me the crater of might! Oh, spider spider! I'm sure that'll get old eventually. And here we come to a barred door with no apparent means of progress at all. There's no buttons, no switches, let me light a torch to prove it. Uh, the arrow's being shot into my side, but there is no way to get through this barred door, no clues, no anything. So do you remember here, all the way back at the start of the game, with this uh, little palace here that uh, had the torch, I think it was, the altar that didn't seem to do anything. Well, if you look carefully at it, this button goes out a bit, so let's hit that with a hammer and see what happens. Secret passage here, more bloody spiders. Come on. And that gives us a passage down here. Another archer. But more importantly, we're now on the other side of that room, and we can hit the switch. And we hear the door across the room open, so that is the way to open that door. If you had missed that at the start of the game, you have no chance. And there will be many situations like this in the videos to come. Right, so back here after quite a long walk, actually, to the other side. Let's finally dispatch that Arthur who was... Arthur? Arthur the Archer, who was bothering us. Bye, Arthur. Uh, and open this uh, with a turn thing that uses a lever instead of uh, manual labour or wild beasts to turn the thing. I, d I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, another torch to provide adequate lighting and another Skeletor. I, I honestly can't remember what they're called. <laughs> okay, but Tome of Power, which I haven't actually... Oh, he turns into spiders as well. Oh, this... <laughs> he turns into tiny little spiders. I forgot there were two sizes. Um, yeah, Tome of Power, uh, which I have two of now, they enhance your weapons. So uh, y you you might get... I don't, can't remember what it does to the malice, and I don't want to waste it just now, but I'll show you. Uh, it, it might power it up, might give you flinging mallets, or it might uh, change the ice staff into firing huge ice balls that spit fire or something spectacular like that. We'll see. Okay, we found the tomb of Lorik. Still don't know who Lorik was, but he was apparently a pretty important person who said that... Uh, 
you know, when I die, could you architect my tomb so that my coffin all levitates up out of it with angelic choirs and then explodes into pieces? And they went, we certainly can. Okay, but uh, the upshot is that we now have Lorik's bones, uh, which we need to grind to dust to make our bread. And uh, how do we get out of here, anyway? There's uh, more water with its uh, wibbly balls. Couple of passages out. There's a teleporter. There's another teleporter. Let's see. Okay, so that leads up to there. Now this one leads... somewhere else. Hey, mysterious. I think I've seen this wall before. Here we are. We're in the uh, Necromancer's dungeon or something. Now, uh, despite that uh, liquid looking extremely dangerous, we can actually uh, slip into it. You need the bone dust of Lorik to complete the spell and create the potion of mythal transmutation. Still don't know why we need the potion of mythal transmutation. We'll find out. So let's go all the way back to the mill again, so that we uh, so just you've got big boots on, just tap dance on them for a bit. Windmill, wind. Oh, why am I seeing that? Uh, okay, the bones are crushing nicely. Go outside to gather the dust. Oh, and a couple of archers. So I said that uh, enemies don't regenerate, which is true. They do generate, though. The game can place more enemies uh, when you do certain events or when it just feels like being a bit nasty to you. All right, for those dealt with, we have the bone dust of uh, old Mithril Bones Lorik. I, I, I hope Lorik's okay with this. While I uh, trek across the entire game again, uh, I should say the music you've been hearing in the background, uh, there are two options for music, well, there are three options for music in this game. First is no music at all. Second is to have the CD tracks, which were actually really good, I thought. They're atmospheric and they have a lot of remakes of uh, the music from the first Heretic. And uh, there's this one, which is the CD tracks, but rendered into MIDI format, which isn't really all that good. But the Steam version doesn't have the CD tracks either, so uh, my hands are tied here. You have created the potion of mithril transmutation. I don't care. Or do I? Because over here in Barbican, I'm going to take the traditional on foot way through the wall this time, rather than fling myself over with a catapult. Or am I? What's that? Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, somewhere over here in Barbican, at this castle, we can see... Oh, no, the wall's still there. Oh, I wonder how I opened that. Um, I need the castle key here, which I emphatically don't have. I genuinely can't remember what I'm meant to do next. Uh, you've actually got a little inventory in this game. Uh, you know, you've got your stats over there on the left. Uh, Intelligence 13, Wisdom 18. Uh, I don't know what any of those do. Uh, we've got the Potion of Mythal Transmutation and an amulet, which I picked up from uh, that room with the, you know, the lever, the spinny thing. Uh, <laughs> I've only got 13 Intelligence, that's why I'm talking like this. But I don't think I've explored through this door before. I activated the drawbridge. Okay, that'll help. We won't have to sneak in by the lavatory again. You can actually destroy this if you have enough patience. Um, I was going to say something about destructible environments this early on, but I honestly don't know if it was a... If, oh, okay. <laughs> if, it, if it was an impressive thing or not, even back then. Okay, drawbridge is open. Does this mean this wall's gone yet? because I'm certain I need to do something beyond that wall, and it's there, and it's stopping me! Anything useful in the pot? Oh no, soup everywhere. Is it normal for the kitchen to be right above the- Oh, oh no, that would be boiling oil for a tank. Oh, just as well I didn't try drinking it. What's down this hole here? A chest with a disc of propulsion, a squeaky door, and that is about it. Whoa! Whoa, no it isn't! Okay, there's a golden archer over there, uh, which, just take my word for it, are like regular archers, but a lot more dangerous. Oh, you can see how much he took my health off there. And he's he's firing quite rapidly as well. Let's, let's get a crater of might out. Here we go! Oh, at last, okay. All right, so we we actually we have a new room to explore. Quite by accident, because I thought I was going down uh, into the corridor with the drawbridge, 
evidently not. The, particularly as this game doesn't have a map, uh, tab just brings up your inventory like that, it can get very confusing. Do you like pushing puzzles in first person shooters? No, neither does anybody, but we've got one anyway. I think that's the extent of the puzzle. There we go. I think you can actually destroy this entire platform. Give me a minute. Whoa, okay. Yeah, you can. Uh, not sure of why I did that or why anyone would want to, but... You know, it's possible. That's something. Oh, what do you want? Hello, good morning. Oh, sorry you're dead. It's not really a good morning anyway. So there doesn't seem to be much of interest in this room, apart from, uh, my... Oh, hang on a minute! I was just I was just doing that for something to do while I was uh, speaking, but uh, there's a little button under here. Where is that taking me? I think I think I hope this is genuinely a secret this time. Oh, it's the, it's the other side of that door that I was bothered by before. Okay, all right, uh, pointless, but uh, it's nice to know anyway. So I'm going to revert to my usual tactic of jumping out the window. And this is a new bit of river which I haven't seen before. I think I think this is what I was looking for. Can't see a thing, but yes, yes, no, 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 no. There's a squid. There's a squid. Right. So as I was saying, we jump into the water. This is where we're meant to be going. There is suddenly a mithril wall over here. We have transmuted into wood. We can now belt it with a hammer and walk through the water, which is strangely unaffected to our prize, the castle key, which for safekeeping is not under the map, but under several layers of concrete and a moat. So we know where we're going now. Oh, what's this? Water breathing? That would have been handy miles ago. Alright, and that's that wall down and we're back at the moat. And so, all that remains is for us to make our way up the drawbridge eventually. There we go. Let's get back to the marketplace inside. Let's go right to the palace. Whoa, we've got some teleported in archers. Looks like I'll have to deal with them the hammer way. All right, and with all that done, we've got the palace key. We open the doors. Uh, we open another smaller set of doors within the first doors. Is there going to be a microscopic set of doors behind this one? We don't know. But. Uh, that is no, this, that's us now inside the main palace, and uh, if I can just dodge this archer, Zaru, while I'm talking, that's the end of what I would call the first part of Black Marsh. So stay tuned for part two, and uh, we'll see if it gets any better from here.